Welcome to this lecture on the first part of chapter 13. Now, in the previous chapter, I left a question there. Can a context-free grammar define all regular languages? So, remember, a regular language is any language that can be defined with a finite automata, a transition graph, or a regular expression. So with Kleene's theorem, if we could define it using one of those three things, and we can define it with all the others. So what we need to do to answer this question is see if there's a way that we can convert one of those things, either a finite automata or a regular expression, into a context-free grammar. And for here, I'm going to use a finite automata. And this is a finite automata that accepts all words with two a's in them. So when we read one a and then another a right after it, we're stuck in the final state, meaning we accept the word. So, um, and again, this is an example. This uh, algorithm we can apply to any finite automata. What we do is we start at, we label the start state with an s. And then any final state uh, we label, and now we can't label them the same thing, but we label and keep track of our final states, and we also label the other states with capital letters. And these capital letters are going to become the non-terminals in our context-free grammar. So, um, and it's important that we label the start state with the start starting non-terminal, so S. So what we can do is say, if we're in, st in this state right here, and we read a B, we go back to this state. And how we generate a production for that is, if we're in the start state and we read a B, we go back to the start state. So the non-terminal that's, Eventually, we're going to start with S, that non-terminal, is uh, of the state that we are currently in is going to be at the end of our string that we're building up to create a word in this context-free grammar. Now, um, if we're in the start state and we read an A, then we go to state M. If we're in state M, and that was right here. If we're in the start state and we read an A, we go to state M. If we're in state M and we read a B, we go back to state S. And if we read an A, we go to state F. Okay, now finally, if we're in the state F and we read an A, we go to state F. Or if we read a B, we go to state F. Now, state F happens to be one of our final states. So remember, finite automatas can have more than one finite final state, and that's okay, but we just find our final states and we add one more production onto it and we say no. So that way, we can disappear the final non-terminal in our language. Now, here's a word in this language. See, it has a double A in it. So let's see how this context-free grammar generates this word. So we start with the start symbol. We replace it with a B, S. Then um, we replace it with an, the S with a, a, M, and then we got another B there. So then we replace the M with a B, A, B, S, and then the next B right here, we're going to uh, replace this S with a, another B, S, and that would leave us with B, A, B, B, S. Okay, and then we read an A next. All right, so we have an A and we want to put an A next. So we're going to take our S and replace it with an A, M. Okay, now we read the second letter of our double A and 
we're in M is our terminal that we need to replace, so we're going to replace it with an AF. Okay. Okay. Now uh, we have our. Um, we still have our um, B A on there, so we'll replace the F with a B A, and then, or with a B F. And I think I said B A, but we're replacing it with a B F. Finally, we have one more F to replace. We'll replace that with an AF. And then finally, the F on the end right here will replace with that null uh, character. And we'll be left with this word here. And of course, you don't have to write the null character. And you can see that we're able to generate this word through this sequence right here. Now that's the same sequence that a finite automata would run on this word. So notice the first one, we're in the start state to begin with. We read a B and we go back to the start state. Then we read an A and we go to state M. So the non-terminal at the end of this word it kind of tells us what state we're in. When we read a, a B, Next, from this state, we go back here and go to state S. Then when we read a B again, we re go back to state S. And then an <clears throat> A tells us to go to state M. And then another A tells us to go to state F. Then we read an, a B, and that tells us to go to state F. Then we read an A, that tells us to go to state F. We're out of letters, so we make F disappear by nulling it out with this production right there because F is a final state. And basically, the same path that we would have taken through this finite automata is listed out through all these non-terminals that we replaced as we generated the word. So hopefully you could see that this language right here is the same language as that. And we can do this process of creating this context-free grammar by just creating one production for each edge. If I'm in the start state and I read an A, then I go to state M. So that's a proof for theorem 21 that says all regular languages can also be defined by a context-free grammar. Now, there are some context-free grammars that are also regular. And if we have all non-terminals, which a sing or all terminals in all of our productions besides the null productions, if we just have a, a, a string of non-terminals followed by a terminal, then that context-free grammar is also regular. And that's part of theorem 22 that you can read in your book.